one of the first things you want to usually land up doing with your data is gridding it just to see what it looks like. I mean, I really do recommend that you first look at these line plots. Um, it gives you a much better idea of what's actually in the data. Whereas as soon as you start gridding, it looks pretty and you have nice colors, but then you start getting gridding artifacts. So it's stuff that's just been added in by the computer <coughs> in, excuse me, in order to create the grid. So I really recommend looking at these line, um, line plots first. How I created these, if you go look back in the tutorial about how to import a database, I showed you how to create those, and then we spoke about how to plot the distance along the x-axis um, in the tutorial that spoke about how to convert lat long to x and y in meters. So once you've done that, once you've looked at your data, once you've taken out spikes in your data, so I, I actually haven't spoken about that, mainly because I don't have any spikes in this data, but literally if here my data was just spiking up to an unreasonably high value and it was just at one data point, then I'd know, well, obviously something's wrong at that data point um, because it's only one point, whereas if it happened over several points, maybe it is an anomaly. You literally could just click on the plot here it takes you to exactly where the data point is and then you could click here, right click and go delete marked row. So that's how you would remove spikes. But once you've done that, once you've removed all the spikes in your data and you want to plot up your diurnal data, so you can see here I've got readings, was my original magnetic readings in the survey. Diurnal is my diurnally corrected readings. So I'm going to plot up the diurnal, I'm going to go grid and image, gridding, and then these are the different gridding algorithms. I usually just use minimum curvature, I know a gentleman who loves using Krieging, so you might as well just plot up both, compare them, and see what it shows you. So for now I'm going to click minimum curvature. Channel to grid is the column that you're gridding, so I'm doing diurnal. Name of the new grid, click on the three dots, and just make sure you're saving it in the same place you've been saving everything and let's give it a name so I'm going to call it TMI so total magnetic intensity line L0 to L19 I think was what I all of my lines in total and I'm going to put the word in diurnal so I know it's my diurnally corrected data save grid cell size <coughs> You can look at gridding um, half of your line spacing. I don't know, I always get this wrong. I really need to double check this. Um, the main thing is, so between our lines, I think we had about 10 meters between our lines, and our station spacing is obviously a hang of a lot smaller because we had a walk magnetometer. And so it records, I think, every second or less than every second. So I mean, you don't, don't want to grid it that small. Um, like gridding it at less than a few centimeters because it might be accurate to within a few centimeters along the line but between the lines you've got a much bigger gap and so if you had small gridding spaces like that you'd be introducing data into the grid when you do the gridding that doesn't exist so you want to rather look at your biggest spacing so our biggest spacing was 10 meters between lines so I could put a cell size of five meters, so about half of that. But for now I'm actually going to leave it blank. I, I really recommend you come back and play with this, so we can even do it after. Let's, let's just do this first, click OK. And you can see obviously the smaller your spacing, the longer it's going to take to grid. So if it's being unreasonably long in gridding the data, you might want to go back and change your values. Do you want to save the open the change to the open document? Always click yes when you see that. Okay, so this is our data. So you can see here from this is about line nine, because I've seen this data before, down to line nineteen, things fell apart because I was carrying the magnetometer at this point and I had a mag a metal strip in my hat that I didn't know about. But you can see it's gridded up the data. There's gaps between the lines because of the grid cell size that it's chosen. But that's okay. Don't be afraid about gaps in your data. You don't want to make up data. Like, if it was to fill in this gap, it's not going to fill it in with a true reading because there was no data there. 
So rather be realistic, be honest with your clients about where exactly the data was collected. So two things I'd like to do now is let's also grid it again but with a Krieging method so that you can see the different options. So diurnal, I'm going to give it a new name. Uh, so that's a previous file I did. I should have said minimum curvature, but now I'm going to say Krieging. I'm going to leave the cell, cell size blank. So we can compare the two. Just takes a bit of time. This definitely takes a bit longer. I'm going to pause it. I'll come back when it's finished. Okay, so I'm back. This is the Krieging, so I'm just going to reduce that, make that smaller, and then go here, Windows Vertical, so we can see them next to each other. In order to see the whole grid, you can go up here and click on this Earth button, and it zooms out. So I could do the same here, click on this and click on the Earth, or I click on this original one, I go to these brown squares and click on the middle one that says Change Extent on All Maps. So what it does is it takes the extent of this map and applies it to all other maps. So you can see it shrinks that. Okay, so there's Krieging on the left and minimum curvature on the right. And you can see there are some variations between them. Probably if we zoomed in a bit, it would help. Let's go here. I'm clicking on the Krieging. I'm now clicking on this magnifying glass with a square behind it. It's called Zoom In. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm going to literally zoom in with a box. So I create the size of the box, but then it doesn't automatically zoom in. I then have to click again. And the reason why they've both zoomed in is because I've still got this option selected that says change extent on all maps. So whatever I zoom in here, it does on other maps. You can see the Krieging is quite blocky, whereas the minimum curvature is a lot more smooth. Um, so yeah, it, it's your choice what you prefer. I'm going to zoom out again. I'm going to close this Krieging one, and I wanted to just see what the difference is, is between using a default cell size and actually putting in a value. So let's go back to gridding and minimum curvature. And I'm going to just put here 5 meters cell size. Well, you can actually put the SS. SS for station, uh, I suppose I should say grid spacing, grid size. GS is 5 meters. I'm going to put a 5 here. Let's see. It might make it very long to grid it up, or maybe it will make no difference. Whoa! <laughs> I think I know what it is. Okay, so if I, you know, well, it's good that it's happened because now we know, you'll know if it happens to you. If I go back to this grid here, you can see at the bottom it says the coordinates are um, in geographic, where I can see that this is longitude, this is latitude. So by saying 5, I've literally said 5 degrees cell size or gridding size because it takes whatever the units are of your grid. So that's why this is such a disaster. And so the reason why it's doing this is because lat long were my default X and Y in my database. So how you would change this is, go, let's go back on the bottom left here to databases. Sorry, I've got several loaded. Um, this is the one we were working with, so I'm going to click on it. It doesn't open up, but it does highlight that it's been minimized over here. So I'm going to maximize it. And you can see, if I look at my longitude latitude column, there's a blue X and a blue Y. So that tells me these are my default X and Y. If I want to create a grid in meters, I've got to change my default X and Y. How I do this, I go coordinates, and I go either set X and Y or coordinate system. So I'm just going to go set X and Y click here, I'm going to go X UTM, Y UTM, click OK. You can see the blue X and Y disappear there and they appear over here. So let's try grid again. So I'm going to do it from scratch. So diurnal, I'm going to take, oh we can leave, uh, take it away, let's do our first one again. So this was the one that didn't have any grid cell size. I'm just going to overwrite the file, so I'm going to click OK. Do I want to overwrite it? Yes. And it pops up. And you can see now as I drag my mouse over it, now down here the units are a lot, lot bigger. And it's now in meters. You can see the M. And it tells you it's UTM zone 35. So that's great. Let's do it again. 
and actually put in a cell size. So our grid size of 5 meters and 5. Let's click OK and see what happens. Overwrite it, yes, I don't want that original file. Ah, it didn't take too long. So let's just reduce this. Okay, so I'm going to go Windows, Vertical, so they plot next to each other. I'm going to click here, I'm going to go on the Earth button. I'm going to click on the brown square so they both look the same. And you can actually see that the 5 meter one is a lot smoother than the default grid size. So it's filled in a lot of these gaps because the gridding size is bigger and things look a lot smoother because of the larger grid size. So GSOT actually was choosing a smaller grid size. So you can play around with it and see I just want to zoom in. I'm going to zoom. I'm clicking on, on the one that on the left and I'm clicking on the zoom in box. I just want to show you over here if I zoom in. You can see there's a lot more detail on the Geosoft gridded one, the smaller grid size. Whereas here on my 5 meter one, it's really smoothed out this anomaly, linked it across, and it's quite a low resolution one. So this shows you the importance of your grid cell size. So let's zoom out again. And really, I mean, it's created this big anomaly here. So this is a good example of why after you've done gridding, you should then plot your data points. So let's, I'm going to stay selected on this bigger grid size. I'm going to go here to Map Tools. And I'm going to go on Line Path. I'm going to leave everything as is, and I'm going to click OK and click OK for map scale. So what it's done is it's loaded my lines that I walked along. And the importance of this is that I can see here that this huge pink region here up at the top, there's no data there. So I can't believe this anomaly because there's nothing connect collected there. So that's very important is to load your data on. I'm going to click on this right hand plot. I'm going to do it again here. You can actually change here. It says label location. Mine says none, but I'm going to change it to end. Click OK. OK. And it's actually, if you zoom in, it's given me my line numbers on the end. Something else you can do, I'm just going to uncheck this. So when I click on the plot, it brings up here on this left hand side the group manager tool. If that doesn't come up, just click on this icon here that says toggle view group manager. And then in here shows me all the databases all the data loaded on this grid. So this lower AGG is the data itself. This path are these lines that I've just plotted. So if I want to take them away, I deselect it and they're gone. Now I'm going to go back to Map Tools, Symbols, Location Plot. And so literally I'm going to take those X and Y data I had and plot it as dots on my map. Mask channel, it's just asking what channel should it use to know where to plot it. I either use my X or Y values. You can change the size of the symbols it's going to plot. I click OK, and you can see it's loaded small dots. So they're quite small. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. 0.5, I'm sure if I make them one. There we are. So now it looks like lines because I've made them so much bigger. And let's do it one more time, and I'm going to make it 0.5. Okay, and if I zoom in, so I'm going to click here, click on my zoom in box, and zoom in on this region, you can see the individual data points. And so again, I would now know, okay, well this red here, it's, it's not actually data that I've collected, it's the computer has gridded between the lines. So, I mean, there could be an anomaly there, but just to be reasonable, you probably wouldn't want to go drill a hole if you wanted to drill a hole, a well or a borehole. You wouldn't drill it on a space where there's no data and where the computer has gridded between them. You would uh, drill something in an area where you have definitely collected data. If you want to move around on this plot, click on this hand button and that's the pan button and you can just click and drag and you can move around. It goes away as soon as you've done it once. So if you right click, you'll see here pan excuse me, the, the quick button is a P. So just go here, if you keep pushing P on your keyboard, the hand stays there. 
and then you can keep zooming around quite easily. So yeah, this is how you grid your data. Just to warn you, if you don't save a grid, you'll lose all of this data you've plotted. And so let's see, when I close this, it says to me, do you want to save the changes? So I want to click, say yes. As soon as it saves a grid, it saves it as a map. So it's added in GRD, but that's not the extension. It's a dot .map extension. And so that moves it from being here under a grid in the left-hand column to being under maps. And this means yeah, you can come back and edit it and change it. I would now suggest before you do that, go watch the tutorial on how to create a map, because that talks about how to create a base map and put in coordinates and color scales. And then you want to do that before you save it as a, well, as a map. So go check out that tutorial. So, but just to show you, if I expand this grid option in the left-hand side here, this highlighted one is this grid that's open here. If I click on this other one, it highlights the grid that I've selected. So some useful tools for plotting up your data.